Hey dear Easterlingers, hope you're having a good day. Well, I am here with another Death May Die monster, and this is Buckrug, which is a weird name. But anyways, I primed him with my airbrush with some matte gray, and then I primed him with, uh, not primed him, but I base coated him with some necrotic flesh from the Army Painters War Paints Air Range. And then we're starting off with a little bit of... Um, under dark gray so this is going to be going on the entirety pretty much well pretty much all the entirety of the skin that's been there but what it is i actually add a little bit of speed paint medium to it like i did once with a metallic paint uh just to make it a little bit more translucent and to keep that necrotic flesh underneath uh a little bit coming through just to give it more of a you know gruesome look to it as you can see in the artwork although he's sort of sideways there he's got this weird grayish tone um and yeah so this is a monster so this is from uh season two of cthulhu death may die uh you get this one and i think he shows up in one of the episodes there uh which is great about this game by the way you get uh boxes that contain exactly what you need to play that round uh so right now season one and two are available for anyone to purchase anywhere uh if you can get your hands on it still Season 3 and 4 are in the Kickstarter that will be delivered sometime eventually in the near future or late future. Who knows when, right? These Kickstarters anymore. Uh, but the monsters, the miniatures in this, of course it's a Simon game, so you know it's going to be good quality miniatures. Again, the bigger miniatures I find are always better when it comes to Simon games. Their smaller miniatures lack some of the details sometimes. Um, I haven't paid in any of the investigators yet in here. I'm actually going to go through the box and I've noticed that whenever you get, I don't even know how I got so many investigators, but there's like, I think I got like 20 or 30 or something. I, like, there's tons. Again, I don't know where I got them. I don't know if I got them from a, I don't think I got them from a Kickstarter box because I only bought season one and two and I don't think I got anything extra unless I did. I don't remember, but I might go through them because a lot of them have exactly the same traits that you can use in the game so there's not even a point in like having the same person over and over so i might go through a box and see maybe oh you know what maybe i should not keep all of them and then sell some of the investigators some people out there might only have some of them or whatever so we'll take a look and see how that works um but as you can see this is a larger miniature so it is a bit longer to paint i could have put this a little bit faster for you guys but i like chatting with you and i'm sure you like to hear my voice and you like to hear my opinions on my paint um so yeah, like I said, I used an airbrush, which is fun. I'm enjoying my airbrush. It's great for priming, just amazing. Uh, so I used a new matte, well, new, I don't know, to me it's new, matte gray from the Army Painters War Paints. Uh, did a nice um, coating of that. And then I went pretty much just like a Zenithal highlight for um, the necrotic flesh kind of thing. But I did try and get everywhere with it just because I wanted that skin. Now I'm using hardened carapace. Now my point was to have a gray like in the artwork. I did not realize, or I did not remember, that Hardened Carapace was green. So I was like, hmm, do I leave it on here or not? So I just kept painting anyways the part that's like a shell. Uh, he's got these spikes, and I painted his toenails with this, or the nails coming out of his toes there, out of his, la his feet. And uh, as I kept painting, I was like, oh, this almost looks like crap. Like, it's, it's it doesn't look good. And... Plus, it was shiny for some reason. It was very glossy. So, pretty much this entire part, you could skip over if you want. If you don't want to hear me talking about other stuff or talking about my, my airbrush here and there. Uh, by the way, that airbrush was dirt cheap. Works great. I don't know how long it's going to last me. It came with many needles and stuff like that. Uh, I mean, it's not a $200 airbrush, that's for sure. It's not even a $50 airbrush, but... It does the job. I mean, what more do you want an airbrush to do? Like, it's just to blow paint onto a miniature. I mean, I don't know how precise I can be with it. Maybe that's the point. But to me, it worked great, especially for priming. It does what it needs to do. Um, you guys can tell me what the difference is between $200 airbrush, which I'm sure some people on YouTube have done, which I think I've watched, actually, and I still don't understand the difference. Uh, maybe the, mecha the mechanics of it. Like, you know, to me, it's you press a button, air pushes out paint. <laughs> it's not hard. Uh, anyway, so if ever you guys are looking into an airbrush, uh, consider it because it is worth it for priming. I still use rattle cans once in a while. Actually, one of my rattle cans yesterday went kaput on me again. So I'm starting to even look more now at the fact that maybe I should just stick to airbrushing <laughs> when I come to priming. I'm using a little bit of tanned flesh now on the underbelly of this crazy creature. Uh, some people are enjoying this view instead of using the, the top-down view, which I used to have, which used to just see... Uh, 
a painted background kind of thing. Uh, now you're pretty much seeing my thumb and a holder because it's harder on these bigger miniatures to get a good angle underneath that stomach, like especially when you're having the, the, the little paint holder there, the miniature holder. Uh, sometimes it gets in the way, but I hope you guys still enjoyed this view. Uh, please comment down below if you're enjoying this way of seeing me paint. Some people said, ah, oh, it's like watching, it's like being there with you, sitting there painting with you. Sturge Tan now to do all these weird tentacle thingies. Now I'm just doing the edges of the tentacles on the big ones. And I'm going to like slowly let it come off the brush. Uh, I watered it down a bit as well. Uh, just to get like some pink onto the other parts of that grayish so just to blend it in and I'm doing like the jaws of this thing which are like that as well uh, a lot of parts under the belly there he's got these weird looking oh no wait that's not with that color it's another color I'm thinking in a little bit in advance here uh, this is mostly just these little tentacles here and there the inside of the mouth too to give it this nice little pinkish uh, hue to it as well uh, yeah, yeah, so just and take your time because if you hit other parts, there's other paint coming over this anyway, so you can touch that up after. And as you can see, still that hardened carapace just looks so weird and glossy. I don't know why it looks so gray on the bottle, but yet comes out so green. I had no idea about that. So, anyways, we'll fix it up after. And we're going to move on to Crusted Sore from Army Painter. This thing needs a lot of shaking, folks. If you have the wrist to do it, go ahead, but I don't. So I got myself a nail polish shaker. I don't have the Vortex one because I find the Vortex one is way too expensive for what it does. The nail polish shaker does a great job. You put it in there, it shakes it like a paint. paint a can of paint like you go to a paint store and those machines that shake that's what this thing does it's not as crazy as that but it does a great job but this crusted sore for some reason it just comes out with pigment like no pigmentation just medium it's so weird how this one does that i don't know why every single time i have to shake it like crazy just to be able to get it to come out a nice consistency a nice red like this this is what I, this is the color it's supposed to be and okay yeah it doesn't matter if you put it on two um coats of it but having just one coat but that's thin enough to keep the details that's what I look forward to uh, doing these tentacles on the top of his head as well this thing is not pretty to look at he's a pretty interesting well he's not pretty to look at but he's pretty interesting <laughs> uh, he's uh, got all sorts of weird stuff coming out of him uh, but I mean all the Cthulhu death may die miniatures are interesting monsters and in that uh, and I'm slowly getting through the box so I've painted a few not many uh, but uh, at least I've gotten through all the elder ones are done those are cool you can take a look at those in the playlist that popped up at the beginning uh, and or take a look at my channel and see what it is and if you're new to the channel please hit that subscribe button I know many of you are and it is free and it doesn't cost anything well hopefully one day I'll be able to make money on this but eh, whatever right it's an expensive hobby but whatever I'm going back to that Sturge tan now because I want to dry brush on top of that crusted sword just to give it a little bit more depth to it I also hit a little bit more of those tentacles just to make sure this is where I'm gonna cover up that hardened carapace now with some necromancer cloak now this is the gray I was looking for I should just went with this right off the bat but you know what having it on top of the hardened carapace actually covers up really well and it does a good job and it gets rid of that glossiness thank god because that was way too shiny uh, and I put it on a little bit thinner as well just to make sure that I don't get rid of too many details because once you paint over it you paint again you're starting to muffle those details and you don't want to do that so again you can pass through this if you want you know exactly what I'm gonna be painting here is those all the carapace parts that's why hardened carapace I went with carapace you know uh, it was giving me the idea but anyways necromancer cloak is the color I chose instead so if you have painted it first with that hardened carapace I hope you didn't and you skip that part and then you moved on to the next one and you got here and said oh okay this is what I'm gonna be using now that's what you got to use this this is it here and you do it on all those little spiky things and on the toenails as well you give a nice little mani petty and uh yeah and the necromancer cloak does a great job covering over that hardened carapace so you shouldn't have any problems there there's also these little claws coming out the side of his head i think or is like underneath his armpits or near to anyway right there you see what i mean i don't need to explain everything to you guys you you see what i'm painting right <laughs> Anyways, yeah, moving on to the final thing. It's a flesh wash for the entirety of this miniature. It's going to nice and make it really gruesome looking. It's going to tone it down a bit. We're going to put some on all of it. Um, actually, I'm not even sure. I don't think I touched the uh, Necromancer cloak with it at all. 
uh, I think I leave it as the gray as it is there. I don't want it. I didn't. I don't know. I'm, maybe I do. I don't know. Keep watching. You'll find out, right? Because if you skip ahead, then you're gonna miss some details that I do, maybe, or you're gonna miss out on my little banter and my talking about board games and talking about painting and my f wonderful airbrush. Yes, I love my airbrush now. I am. I have been smitten by an airbrush. So, but I still love painting like this. And it, look, it's rare that I lately I've been painting so much with speed paints and contrast paints that it's fun to go back. Oh, I do use. Oh, you know what? I use a dark tone. <laughs> no, soft tone. No, what is this? Dark tone. Dark tone. I use that on the hardened carapace. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, not the hardened carapace. On the necromancer cloak. Wow. Jeez, I can't remember anything. So yeah, I just give it a little bit of depth with that uh, dark tone there. Uh, anyways, there you go. Bach rug. Book rug, book rug, is painted, ready for the table, and take on the investigators. And Cthulhu, death may die. I want to thank you guys for watching. Hit that like button, and we'll see you all in the next one.